Today, I'll be explaining continuous autofocus with the X100V, why we use it, when we should or shouldn't use it, and how to get the best results with it. But keep in mind, most of today's digital cameras have this feature. So even though the settings might vary from brand to brand, the function and purpose of continuous autofocus remains the same. Now, before I begin, for anyone who's new to my channel, my name is Jay. I'm an amateur enthusiast photographer, navigating my way through the photography world, learning as I go and sharing my insights with you guys. So if you enjoy my content, make sure to like, comment and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Let's get it. So what is continuous autofocus? To learn more about it, I have a video I made previously going over the different focus modes on the Fujifilm X100V. So check that out first. Link to the card somewhere in the top corner. Basically, your camera contains built-in software which allows it to communicate with the lens and determine what should or should not be in focus depending on the settings you have provided and also its own pre-built autofocus algorithm. The better the algorithm is in conjunction with how fast the camera's processor is and how fast the focus motor on the lens is will determine how good the continuous autofocus is. So why do we use continuous autofocus? So think about it this way. With manual focus, we have control over the focus ring. We can take our time to adjust focus. With single shot autofocus, we have control over where in the scene we want our focus point to be and the camera will spend less time acquiring focus than manual. But what if we had no control over time? What if you are faced with a situation where you need a shallower depth of field that does not allow you to turn your focus ring fast enough or set a focus point fast enough? Continuous autofocus is the answer and as much as I would love to deny this, Humans are just not as fast as computers when it comes to calculations per second. Imagine a subject matter moving around in your viewfinder, not just side to side, but forwards and backwards too. The plane of focus is constantly changing. How quickly do you need to turn the focus ring at lower aperture values to keep the plane of focus on the subject in manual mode? How quickly do you need to set the focus box with the joystick in single point autofocus mode? With continuous autofocus, we let the camera know what it needs to maintain focus on, and all we need to do is ensure the subject matter is within our frame. This leads me to the next topic. When should you use continuous autofocus? Well, it really depends on your style, but I think there are certain situations where continuous autofocus should be mandatory, and that would be sport, action, and wildlife photography. These scenarios all require focus on subjects which are more often than not moving linearly or dynamically in varying speed and direction. Other uses for continuous autofocus can be in portrait or fashion photography or even street photography where subject matter is constantly moving as well. As you can tell, as long as there is movement or unpredictability in a scene, continuous autofocus should be highly considered. So of course, it would be logical to assume that for non-moving subjects, continuous autofocus would not be necessary. Photos where you can take your time to plan and focus, such as still life, macro, or studio work, would not require continuous autofocus and can sometimes be a detriment to utilize these focus modes in these certain scenarios. Now, how do we use continuous autofocus? First, switch your camera into continuous autofocus mode. On the X100V, it is labeled as C on the switch located here. The second setting you need to pay close attention to is your shutter speed. While continuous autofocus aims to keep moving subjects in focus, it will not stop your images from being blurry due to slow shutter speeds. As a general guide, your shutter speed should be set at a minimum of 1 250th of a second for moving subjects to ensure as little motion blur as possible. It goes without saying that the faster the subject is moving, the higher your shutter speed needs to be to freeze the motion. Now we can talk about the different settings that can be used in continuous autofocus mode. First off, face and eye detection. You can choose to either target the face or individual eyes, or you could set the camera to track both face and eyes. As you can imagine, this is very useful only if there is a clear human subject in frame. I have this feature turned on only when making fashion style portraits of models that are moving or capturing moving human subjects on the street. Keep in mind when using face eye detect 
it will override or conflict with whatever focus mode you have set. So only turn this feature on when the situation calls for it. Which brings us to the next setting for continuous autofocus. Focus modes. You have three options, single point, zone, and wide tracking. Single point is shown as a single box on your screen. You can change the size of the box by pressing down the joystick and rotating the back dial. The smaller the focus box, the more precise the focus point, but the slower the focus speed. Bear that in mind. Single point focus mode is not really effective when it comes to continuous autofocus. I would actually skip this entirely. However, you can use single point focus to track a subject, but it just takes a lot of effort and practice on your part. Using the joystick, set the focus box to where you want to position and focus the subject in the frame. Then what you would do is move your camera with the moving subject at the same speed whilst maintaining the subject where the focus box is. The faster the subject matter moves, the more challenging this becomes. Continuous autofocus is all about letting the camera do all the hard work. So setting it to single point focus mode kind of defeats the purpose. Next is zone focus mode. This will generate a larger box than single point focus mode and the camera will focus on anything within that box. This is a much better option for maintaining focus on subjects moving quickly in a linear path as it requires less precise movements with the camera to maintain good tracking. One thing to note is that due to the size of the focus area, it is best to have subject matter fill in as much of that area as possible. Otherwise, the chances of the camera shifting its focus to another subject within that area increases. This mode works best, I find, in situations where there is a good contrast between the subject and its background. The less distracting the background is, the better the camera is at continually tracking the subject. It is also best to use this when the subject is moving away or towards you from front on, as you can keep the zone area in one place. The downside to this focus mode is that it will only focus within the area within that zone, and if there just so happens to be more than one distinguishable subject within the zone, there is a higher chance the camera will change focus unexpectedly. Which leads us to the final and probably most effective mode for continuous autofocus, wide tracking. With this mode selected, the camera will track the entire frame. You will see a focus box like that from the single point focus mode. However, you cannot change the size of this box. When you point the camera at a subject, the camera will lock on to whatever was on the focus box when you half press and hold the shutter button. And as long as you have the shutter button half pressed, as the subject is moving in the scene, or as you recompose the scene, or both, the camera will continue to track the subject that was originally in the focus box when you first half press the shutter, provided it is still fully visible within the frame. As you can see, this mode is the most effective way of using continuous autofocus when dealing with erratically moving subject matter. As the camera is tracking the entire frame, you don't need to worry about changing focus area. And as long as the focus box is locked on the right subject, all you need to make sure is the subject does not go out of the frame and the camera will handle the rest. When you couple this focus mode with the face eye detection, it does a good job at maintaining focus on a single human subject. If there are more than one human subject in the frame, then it could be more problematic. So with the focus modes explained, we can see that continuous autofocus is very handy, but not refined. Thankfully, we can give the camera more specific options to optimize its tracking abilities. In AFC custom settings, you have five tracking settings that Fujifilm has provided you. These are set and cannot be changed. They are set in a way that optimizes tracking in certain situations. Rather than going over each of the five, let's move down to the one and only custom setting where we can customize our personal tracking options. Here, Fujifilm provides us with an explanation of what each of the settings do. So I will try to explain it and demonstrate how it impacts the tracking. First is tracking sensitivity. It determines how sticky the tracking is at maintaining focus where the focus box is. 
Zero will mean that the camera will shift very quickly to another subject if it comes into the focus box and obstructs the original subject. Four would make the camera less likely to shift its focus off the original subject. Next is speed tracking sensitivity. Zero denotes a slower tracking speed since the speed of the subject is slow and constant. This also ensures the camera doesn't need to constantly readjust focus, which means potentially more frames in focus. Two is for subjects that move from slow to fast or vice versa. The tracking and focus refresh will be higher to try and keep up with the change in the subject's speed. It would be detrimental to have a higher tracking sensitivity when tracking slow moving subjects as the camera will be constantly shifting focus and if you press down the shutter while the focus is readjusting, you could end up with an out of focus frame. The last setting is zone area switching. When set to center, the camera will try its best to maintain focus on whatever was originally locked in the focus box and ignore any subject that comes in front of it. Front will make the camera more likely to shift its focus onto whatever moves into the focus area that is in front of the original subject of focus. Before I close this video off, I do want to mention that continuous autofocus is most effective when used in conjunction with continuous high-speed burst. You can find this setting by pressing the drive button and selecting CH high-speed burst. The more frames per second you choose, the more chances you will end up with a shot you will be happy with. Everyone has their own methodologies and situational uses, so I can't recommend the best settings for continuous autofocus. However, I personally believe that understanding the theory behind a function is a lot more beneficial than learning a specific function and not knowing how to adapt it to your own needs. Well, that about wraps things up. Thanks guys, and until next time.